Okay, so welcome back for part two of session seven. We're playing around a little bit at the break, and at this point, I'm knowing that the uh, solar tool just has a bug in it, so I'm going to advise you to sort of stay away from that. At least, I'm having a very hard getting it, time getting that to run without having it sort of lock up my machine. What I saw was a behavior where it seems to open a dialog behind some of the other windows, and there's some confusion about which window's on top. So I think there's actually something happening in the background. But for now, stay away from it until we sort of get it debugged in terms of what's happening. So I wouldn't worry about that just yet. Let's go back to the analyze and let's try one other type of analysis and see what's going on there. So let's try lighting and see what's happening there. Okay, from the lighting standpoint, what we'd like to do is, given this envelope that we have today, just understand oh, just how the daylighting is in terms of reaching the interior surfaces. We'd like to know if it's adequate for kind of just our day-to-day -day work and if it's uh, within levels that might even give us some lead points for getting good natural daylighting throughout the day. So let's kind of look at that whole issue. Okay, as we think about daylighting just as a principle, there's a couple different sort of aspects to lighting and lighting from the sun that you know about. One is sort of sun lighting, which is coming from the direct sun, and that is a component that contributes to the daylighting. So all these windows on the south side, the east side, and the west side, they're going to get some sunlight at times during the day, and that's going to contribute to the amount of natural light in the building. There is actually another component just called daylight, which comes from the sky, or skylighting, if you want to go that way. That actually happens from all sides of the sky uniformly. So it's a little bit strange to think about that, but even on the north side of the building, when the sun isn't shining, you still get a fair amount of light through those windows. Okay, and it's a very soft light. Um, it's useful for daylighting too, so we actually sort of add those two different components together. The sunlight and just the skylight, or the daylight from the sky. But when we go through and add that together, it looks like this. We'll say new. Okay, we'll continue. And then go off and, oh, we have different sets of criteria we can consider, whether it's the 2009 or the new V4 criteria. V4 criteria are a little bit tougher. So we can choose which levels we want to consider. This will give us a list of all the floor levels. We really only have one level to consider right now, level one. We can then say what the resolution is. For what we need, and you can go with a lower resolution, it's going to be the same to you either way. It's not going to cost you either way in terms of your credits because you have unlimited credits as a student. If you don't see it, you have unlimited credits, then like, uh, we need to get you set up with a student account so you can do this analysis without any kind of cost there. Low resolution is just going to be a coarser number but quicker as opposed to a very fine number. So I'm just going to go with uh, kind of low resolution for now. I'll just check the price. It's going to make me do that. So, start the analysis, and it's going to go off and run. Okay, ultimately giving me a little color map back so we can start to think about, oh, just how uh, we want to go through and put some more daylighting into the space. Okay, so this is going to go ahead and run in the background. Let me do this. Okay, so I got my model hanging around over here. What I want to do is start making some changes to the model, but because this is actually running in the background, I really don't want to uh, kind of compromise that. I want to leave this around just kind of as a background process running so I can kind of see what that analysis is, is doing. What I might want to do is just save as so I can create another one, but I'm going to think about sort of playing around with some other daylighting sort of strategies and kind of, oh, how we might sort of incorporate some different things into the building. For example, as you go looking at this building, and this, we haven't made any changes to it yet, I'm just going to look around at it. This has all these windows kind of on the uh, kind of south and uh, east and west side. Uh, if we want to think about, you know, basically trying to provide some coverage, if there's too much light coming in and we want to provide some shading, there's several things we might think about doing. We could go through and uh, extend the roof out a little bit so that we are providing a little shading. If you want to get a sense really quickly for what would be useful, you could go through and just turn on the sun shadows. I could actually turn on the sun path first. 
and sort of say that, okay, for a single day, for example, here we are in New Delhi on April 19th, okay, at two o'clock in the afternoon, I can say, let's take a look at that sun. I will turn on the shadows. You can sort of see at two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm getting a fair amount of sun in through these windows right now. If I'm having a heating problem, that might not be so good. So if you want to go through and change that, some things you can do are, for example, take the roof edge. Oh, that's actually done. So I'm not gonna change the roof edge just yet because I'm going to take a look at the existing before we go ahead. Okay, let's go over to daylighting and I'll say let's load in that daylighting and see what's happening. Looks like I'm not earning any points. That's funny, it's better. It used to say failed in big letters. So here's how it's basically working. You can see in this view, I am getting a fair amount of daylight kind of over in the kind of western side and on the southern side. Over in this corner, I'm just really no daylight at all. You know, there's a scale right here. We could ultimately kind of zoom on in and kind of see what the values are. But in general, you're looking to sort of be in the greenish zone. Okay. If you're in the blue and the green, you tend to be good. The reds are just too dark. The bright yellow, that's actually considered a little bit hot. So it's a little more daylight than you really want. So you might need to put a little shading in there. But you're allowed to have some over. It's, you can have a little bit of yellow. You just don't want to be swimming in yellow. If you're swimming in yellow, you're down in the total uh, direct sunlight. Okay, that would be a little bit hot. People would be in the daytime. So I can look at this strategy and think about how we can change some things. Overall, we're not looking too awfully bad. If I, for example, wanted to go through and oh, just cut down on some of the data lighting, what I could think about doing is maybe extending the roof out or, uh, well, let's kind of think about some things. This, as a first model, was looking not too awfully bad, but let's go back to 3D and kind of play around with this. So for example, in this model, I said, okay, you know, as much as I like this uh, wall of windows over here, I really had the idea that I would like to have a kind of curtain wall here instead. So I can change that to a curtain wall. I'm purposely sort of gonna create a problem for myself just to illustrate what a problem could look like. Over here, let's change that to a curtain wall. What's warning me is that the daylighting model is no longer valid. I'd have to rerun it. Okay, that's certainly gonna put some more daylighting in this side of the building. How about for that north corner? What do you wanna do over there? What would you, we could put some windows on the side walls. That's fine. Anything else we could do to sort of get some daylighting into that north corner? Sidewalls are always a good thing. Any, uh, any other directions we can get daylight from? Yeah, why not think about that? So let's zoom on out. We could do, it's considered a window, but it's actually a skylight. Skylights in here. Good day, sir. Okay, so this is a perfectly reasonable set of assumptions. Let's go ahead and try running that daylighting again. So we'll say that again, we're going to say under the analyze. Let's just do a new daylighting analysis. That sounds fine. Come on in here. We'll again do low resolution just because I want it to be speedy. And let's go ahead and run that. So we'll go through and do that. Here's what I'm anticipating happening. I think that my rear area back over here is probably going to be a whole lot better. 
because of uh, that skylighting and a few windows back there and stuff like that. Okay. I think though, I, and I intentionally did it, I've created a little bit of a problem for myself on the front of the building over here. Because in this front of the building with all that glass over there, as much as we like the daylighting, we probably actually have too much to the point where it's gonna be hot, let in excess heat, be an uncomfortable place where no one would actually feel comfortable sitting there. So I want to do that so we can explore some shading strategies. So let's start to think about that as we're running our analysis. So I can pretty much guarantee it's gonna be a little bit hot over there. So if I wanted to go through and shade those windows, and you can sort of see what's going on by the shadows that are being cast right now. You can sort of see, you know, I'm getting a fair amount of light right here along the edges right now. This is at like uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon today. If I went through and I, for example, went to, oh, uh, even like later in the day or something like that, I could probably even change it to look a little bit different. So we can say, let's take a look at, oh, as opposed to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, let's take a look at 4 in the afternoon. Actually, still will be fine. You can see all the sun coming in this way. Let's see what it's like at 12 in the afternoon. It's coming that way. So maybe 2 is about the worst. How about this? In terms of thinking about summer versus winter, so how are those shadows going to be? When is it, when are the, when are we going to get the most sun into the building? What's the worst case, or could be the best case, depending on what we think, how we want to think about it. When are we going to get the most sun in there? When? Uh, the winter. Yeah, I think it's probably in the winter. If they're if we're at the same latitude, it should be. Somewhere right around there. So right around 12, 19, 12, 21, something like that. That'll probably be the worst case. And again, if it's a cold weather climate, we might like that because uh, we enjoy the sun. It's heating us up. If it's a warm weather climate, we're not liking that so much. So during the summertime, which is usually our worst peak season, we'll say, OK, right around June, Here's what the sun looks like at 2 in the afternoon. Here's what it looks like at 12. Okay. It's actually not too bad. The sun's up pretty high in the sky. But if we were thinking about trying to sort of cut down on some of the sun, here's what we could think about doing. We could take this and just edit the footprint and then start pulling it out a little bit. And just pulling out that footprint just a little bit like that kind of creates a fair amount of shading, okay, that really gets the entire wall. So one very effective way of kind of creating shading is just in the areas where you just pull the roof out a little bit. And yeah, if that goes ahead and takes care of it, you're in pretty good shape. For the most part, on most houses, that's how we do take care of most of our shading. We have a little two foot overhang or something like that, and that takes care of it. And it tends to work pretty well. Where that doesn't work so well, okay, great. Let's take a look at what the uh, lighting analysis said from last time. Got a point, we're doing better. Okay, so we're definitely bright enough back in the corner. That's not our issue at all anymore. Now we're starting to have an issue just over here being too bright. Okay, so. For that, the shading of the roof, that's one strategy that can work. That'll work very well. Another strategy I just want to show you that is a very good way, especially when you have curtain walls, is to think about actually putting some light shells or pins into the curtain wall. That's a very kind of effective way of creating a little bit of shading. So how you can do that looks something like this. I'm going to say, you know, I really don't want to have the roof out like that. I'm going to push it back some more. I'm just going to handle this in the curtain walls. So you can see I have my curtain wall over here. It's got a mullion right there. Okay. If I would like that mullion to, instead of just being a plain old mullion, to actually be a shelf that actually sticks out and provides some shade, okay, here's what I can do. I'm going to take 
my curtain wall definition. And here's its type, and I'm going to duplicate that to say, you know, I really want to be the storefront, but I want to have a kind of light shelf. Okay, it's a slightly different type. And the way we're going to make that light shelf is we're going to take this horizontal mullion, the one you see right here, and make it as opposed to five inches deep, we're going to make it like, you know, 18 inches deep, quite a bit deeper. Now, I don't have that size available to myself just yet, so I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to create that. And how you can create that is in the families, you'll find curtain wall mullions, and here's this rectangular one. If you open it and duplicate it, I'll make one, oh, like one inch by 18 inches. So one inch means that it's going to be about a half of an inch above and a half of an inch below. Okay, 18 inches is right in here. It's currently five inches. We'll make it 18 inches, one foot six. Okay, now if we think about where that 18 inches is measured from, the measurement goes to the center of it. So if we would actually like it to be sort of extending to the outside, we're going to take that 18 inches, and I'm going to give it a 9 inch offset. That'll put it all the way on the outside. If that means it's the way it is, it'll be 9 inches in and 9 inches out. So just a little bit of offset will take care of us. Okay. Now that mullion's not being used yet, but we can apply it. We can apply it individually by choosing a mullion and switching. Got my little light shelf hanging out there. Or if you'd like to apply it to the entire row of the window, we can just take that whole definition and say, let us go ahead and make it the interior mullion type. And now they all have it. So not too bad. So now my south side windows have that light shelf. My uh, west side windows don't have that light shelf. If I want them to have that light shelf too, I will just change it right over here. Okay, now they have it. Now, this is a single light shelf. This is a light shelf at eight feet high. You might notice on campus there are actually some buildings where there's a lot of shelves. There's not just one at eight feet, there's like one every two feet either. A lot of horizontal shelves. Usually what happens there is you have a very tall pane of glass and you want to sort of have shading for the entire distance. Like this will be really good, but it still may be right down at the bottom. So if you want to put in multiple shelves, how do you think you might be able to do that? Let's think about this. They're all hanging around as mullions. You'll see it's happening at this spacing of eight feet. If I, for example, wanted to put one every four feet, okay, we can really just go ahead and adjust it right here. If you want to put them every two feet. Okay. But you can really create as many different mullion patterns as you need to, based on the different sides of the building. So on the south side, you may have some mullions which are running horizontally. On the east and west side, it sounds a little strange, but you could actually have window mullions that run vertically. So let me kind of show you what that looks like. On this side over here, let me just kind of put a little curtain wall right over here. I'll just sort of split this. A nice little curtain wall section. Now, in this case, the shelves are running horizontally. Horizontal shelves turn out to work out very well for south facing kind of windows because the way the sun is coming, it's high, in, or yeah, it's coming from high in the sky, you're trying to block it. It's coming down. East and west are a little bit different. Often, if you go and look at buildings where they have put these some shelves on here, in fact, even if you look at our building, you look at uh, the front of it in Shrewrock, 
we see that all the south-facing windows have shelves going this way. The east and the west ones have shelves that are running vertically instead. They're more what I'll call a fin. And if you're interested in experimenting with fins, we'll take this kind of a construction. And I'll say, let's go ahead and duplicate that type of curtain wall. <coughs> And I'll call it a vertical fin. OK, now, the only difference between our vertical fin and our horizontal is, as opposed to having this horizontal shelf, we're going to go ahead and just make a vertical shelf instead. OK, now that has vertical fins. So, you get an awful lot of flexibility. Curtain walls are really sort of an amazing object because you can put all sorts of fun stuff together. Okay? And that actually works very, very nicely. So you can have the horizontals, you can have the verticals, you can have a combination of the two, depending on what you want. Or even, let me give you one more thing about curtain walls, and that is oh, the whole notion of what I'll call a brie soleil. Or it's really a, it's a curtain wall or a sunshade that doesn't actually have glass in it. Okay, and that seems like a very strange thing. Why would you want that? Sometimes what we'll do is we'll have a big glass wall, but in front of it, we want the wall to be very glassy, but in front of it, we want to have a shade where you can throw fines up it, or you can, you can somehow just, uh, just not have all that glazing on the curtain or all that separation on the curtain wall itself. So let's put it back to storefront. It's going to complain because it's going to lose the windows right there. Okay. But if I don't want to put all that right on the window, I could put a shade in front of the window, three or four feet out, someplace a respectable distance to get some planting in there, a little bit of greenery. And that's another kind of common architectural design feature. How that sort of works is, in many ways, it's similar to a curtain wall. So I could even go ahead and say, great, I'm going to say the wall. Let's go ahead and put that kind of wall with the shelves on it, just right out here. In fact, I can even sort of put it, I can put it squarish. I can even go through, and if I want to, Kind of make it rounded on the corner. Curtain walls, again, a very nice element. So I got this little shading feature out there. Now, you might say, well, that doesn't look very good because why do I want to have this glass wall with all these fins on it hanging around like five feet outside the building? That doesn't really make a lot of sense. But what you can do is go through and take this wall, and I will duplicate it. Now I'm just going to call it, no, you can call it a sunscreen, which would be the more normal way to say it, or a brie soleil, which is the way a lot of architects like to describe it. Okay. And it's going to be very similar. Now the only difference between a shaded screen and the window really is like all this like glazing in here. And if you would like to have a window type or wall type that doesn't have that glazing, you can just change the system panel to see if I can find it. There it is. Actually, that's not right. I keep on doing this, and this is, yeah, you know, I make this mistake pretty consistently. I'm pretty sure that's not right. I think what I want it to be is not none. It is. Find it. Curtain wall, panel empty. That's what it is. None would make too much sense. Okay, so now that's curtain wall, panel empty. In here, if I change this one also to be the breeze soleil type. Okay, so that's just a screen. So at a high level, the purpose of all this is really to see to thinking about you know, your different surfaces and that you can have kind of solid surfaces, you can have windows that are sort of punched in the middle of the surfaces, you can have windows that are punched up high on the surfaces if you want light in there, 
but you don't necessarily want a lot of view. You can go with curtain walls. If you don't have a solar problem, you can just have curtain walls being unobstructed. If you do have the sun that you want to consider, think about whether the curtain walls could have some sort of shading in them. And that shading could be right on the surface of the curtain wall, or it could be out in front of the surface of the curtain wall. You really have a lot of options for what you want to do. Okay, so that's kind of a-okay. The other thing to think about, though, is that the walls aren't the only surface that's really important in your envelope. And okay, I'll finish up with this whole notion of this area, the roof area, because the roof area is pretty interesting, too. Now, you've seen that you can go in and put skylights in the roof. Fantastic. That's really good. Let's talk about a few other scenarios. One scenario that some of you may be considering is doing a green roof. And you're wondering, how do you do a green roof? And it's actually fairly straightforward. So I have this sort of roof over here. This roof just has a lot of, uh, what is it? Just a little uh, kind of asphalt shingles on the top. It's got some structure. It's got some plywood above it. That's kind of OK. But if I want to create a layering system that has some green roof in it, what tends to have, I'll show you in detail this next time in more detail, it's really uh, it's got an air layer, which would be for drainage. It's got some waterproofing. And then it's got like basically uh, earth layer and then a planting layer on top of it. It's got several different layers that all work together. And if you want to model something like that, it's actually pretty straightforward. I'll just say this layer over here is not going to be asphalt shingles. It's going to be some sort of a waterproofing membrane, like EDPM, EPDM. There it is. Nice waterproof membrane. Let's go ahead and insert another layer. On top of that, we can put a layer of air. Actually, that's more like a membrane layer. Okay, over here, air. Oh, maybe two inches of air. Then I'm going to add another layer on top of that, which is going to be more of a finished layer. And this could be earth or grass or something like that, some planting material. And I'll make that, oh, let's say one foot six of that. Super. So now we have something that's a, approximating a uh, green roof. I can say, oops, say OK to that. The membrane it wants to have zero thickness on. OK, let me, uh, which I shouldn't have changed it there. I should have reduplicated and renamed. Let me duplicate it now, although I think I may already be in trouble. Choose that. Okay. Notice it's much bigger and much thicker. My green roof, in general, that's the essence of how you ought to do it. But there's a couple things you want to think about just as a variation on this. If you have a green roof and it goes all the way to the edge, you probably have a problem in that the earth is going to start falling off. You know, so you typically on a green roof have to put a little bit of a ledge on the outside, some sort of little soffit or a little kind of containing wall just around the edge of it to sort of uh, make sure that it's in good shape so that uh, it's protected on the edges. So often in this sort of scenario, you'll go through and say, OK, if that's my roof edge, I need to go through and put some little wall around the outside of it. And I'm just going to do it as a little generic wall right now, but it would probably be something a little bit better than that. But I will go through and typically put just some sort of wall out here. I'll just do the wall, the face interior. So I'll say right here. Now that wall's a little bit too tall right now. So let's go ahead and grab that. And I only want that wall to be, oh, like an unconnected. If the roof was about one foot six of earth, plus a little more than that, it's probably about two foot six or something like that. What's going on here? You. Did 
Do I have two on top of each other? I think I have two on top of each other. My mistake. Oh, actually, I have it there. I don't know how many walls I've put on top of each other here, but it's far too many. <coughs> okay, so again, we're going to take this little two foot six wall. Where that was that a fumble? Oops, saving. Whoa, go up two foot six. Oh, it's kind of connected now. There, here. So I got that little edge. If it's a green roof where people are going to be occupying, you probably actually want to put it up a little bit higher still so that uh, you can put a balcony rail on there or something just to make sure people don't fall off. OK, so you can definitely play around with green roofs. The big trick with green roofs is generally you have to go through and allow a little bit of a kind of separation in there. We're going to play around some more with skylights next time, but let me just, as you kind of get going, give you two sort of general rules about skylights, and I won't model it in Revit, but just kind of draw it out for you so you sort of generally have a sense. Actually, I'll do it on the board here, just so everyone can sort of see. And those two rules are as follows. If you think about kind of a roof surface, and you think about kind of cutting a hole for a skylight in here, and the sun is kind of floating around out in here somewhere, What you tend to want to have is not just an opening, but you want to have a little bit of a reflecting surface. Let me tell you why that is. It's if the sun's just kind of coming down through the opening, that's kind of fine. It sort of floods the space, and we sort of get the sun all happening in that direction, sort of creating a bright spot over here. But if you go through and provide a little bit of a reflecting surface, which is often some sort of a white wall, because you want something to be very reflective, what happens is the sun not only comes in, okay, but it bounces back in this direction. So when you're thinking about skylights, think about reflecting surfaces around the skylight. You actually reflect back a lot more light as opposed to just having it come in as a single shaft of light. Okay, so very often around skylights, if you look out in the lights where you see skylights, around the top, you'll see a big ring of white wall, and that's all about just reflecting light and kind of distributing it evenly. Because that way, not only this side benefits, but all sides benefit. So that's one thing to think about with skylights. Okay. Another thing I want to sort of, and I'll finish up with this one today, have you think about in terms of skylights is, oh, for rooms that are underground, because some of you have those rooms where you are under and buried in the side, and you're thinking about that and how we could approach that. So let's talk about that. I have my building. Okay. But unfortunately, I also have the ground coming down okay. and then coming down over here. Maybe I even have a second story to the building. So the problem is, as you think about it, this area right in the back is a hard area to get daylighting into. Yeah, that's, that's a hard spot if I'm looking at this in section because you're sort of buried under the ground. So two ways you can approach that. One way which is very effective is you can think about allowing yourself just a little bit of a retaining wall here, holding the earth back to here, okay, and then basically putting windows right in here. So you're allowed to go through and create little notches around your building, which are light wells. So if you ever have lived in a house that has a basement, this is a very common strategy. It works for bigger buildings, too. You can have light wells coming on down. In fact, even if you really wanted to get very grand, if you thought about your uh, people downstairs, if you have offices down there or something like that, you know, we could even go through and put in like a terrace or something like that and have some retaining walls that step up so that they have a whole wall of light. So just because you're down in a basement level doesn't mean you're sort of doomed to be in the darkness all the time. That actually works out okay. There's a lot of ways to sneak light down in there. 
Another way to do that, though, and again, I'll finish the, with this one as a final thing for you guys, is even if the, root, the red uh, earth is coming on down, like that, and coming on down the building, you could even think about just ever so slightly stepping the building back just a hair right there. We're creating notches so that we can go through and put a skylight up in the roof right there and just have this wall, the, the, basically the light reflect off the walls and reflect down into that space. So there's a lot of ways to, get slip, ways to get light down into a basement space. So don't give up on your basements yet from a daylight standpoint. There's big ways to sneak the light down there. Okay, beauty. Let us then adjourn for the day. The idea is to go through and play these kind of games in the air buildings. So we can start thinking about the daylighting, think about the thermal performance, and really just see if we can kind of give them that aesthetic feel and the performance that we want so that we can then go through and start like uh, getting the structure and the mechanical in there working with that envelope. Okay, great. Let us adjourn.